Ladies and gentlemen of the NBA 2K community, this fight is... Okay, let me chill. All right. You've been waiting for this video. All right, so over the last two days, I've been talking to Mike Wang specifically, primarily, but I also talked a lot to Scott O'Gallagher and occasionally to Ronnie 2K. Ronnie 2K was, he was a... Uh... Okay, we'll get into that later. Of course, I wrote down all the things of note so I don't forget them when it comes time to make this video. It's gonna be a long video. I'm gonna be talking about literally everything. A lot of the stuff that wasn't even mentioned in the trailer or I haven't seen in any video. I'm talking about rep rewards, my guy. I'm talking about all that random stuff. You know, all that shit they added to the park where you're like, bro, how is that gonna work? I got you. Listen, I'm going into detail, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, let's get right into it. First order of business. Now, Mike Wong hit us all with a crossover because he told us his name was pronounced Wong. It's pronounced Wang. I know, it's crazy. So, uh, we're going back to calling him Mike Wang for the video for the rest of our lives. All right, so the first thing of order was actually Brian Mazik. He's giving me some Discord tag. He's like, agent, bro. They got a lot going on, man. I was like, what you talking about, Brian? And so it was around the time the announcement was about to come out, and Brian even came out with a whole article on Forbes talking in detail about some of this stuff. But it's called NBA 2K Compete, or something like that. Basically, it's... I know that's not a giant ass spider. I know that's not a spider. That's a spider. What? In this house, I kill spiders with brooms. It's dead. It is dead. All righty. The game mode is called NBA 2K Compete. Let me give you an example to describe what it is. Let's say that me and Chris Smooth play a game on the park. NBA 2K remembers that game on the park. If I win the game, I get 1-0 on my record. It's almost like a system to kind of inspire rivalries with one another. If I beat you on the my court five times and you beat me four times, it keeps count of all of that stuff. And it does it across all the game modes apparently. My team, Pro-Am, Park, all of that. So if you're playing with your friend and you're always losing, and you start to talk some smack, they're gonna pull up the database and it's gonna say 2K compete and, and it's gonna show you getting dropped off a lot of times. I thought it was interesting. Uh, you know I've been asking for leaderboards a lot and so this might be a version of it? I'm not entirely sure. So that was the light stuff out the way. Let's get into the heavy stuff. So one of the first things I asked Mike Wang about was the rep rewards and I asked a few times because of course I wanted to get all the answers. There's a couple rep rewards I'm gonna talk about and they're pretty interesting. The first one is probably the one I'm most excited about, but isn't the one you're probably gonna be most excited about? And it's a megaphone. So me and Mike Wang were talking about proximity chat, and I know on his stream he said it returned, but, and this confused me a little bit, because Mike Wang is a senior dev for a pretty big organization, and I just thought he would know what proximity chat was, and some of you guys don't even know what it is. Proximity chat is not talking to the other team. Proximity chat is talking to everybody around you always in the neighborhood. So if I'm near my my core and we're at the door for whatever reason, I could talk to the guy right there unless, for whatever reason, I decide to mute him. That is not in the game. But, and he didn't know what the exact overall was, if you're a 96, or he said 96 or 97 overall, you get what he described as a megaphone. So you can activate your megaphone and basically yell some shit that the entire park will be able to hear. If you're grinding this year, you have so many trolling opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, you could do whatever you want with that megaphone. Just know everybody's gonna be able to hear you. They don't have to be in your party, you don't have to be... It's a megaphone. You guys know me, I have like two megaphones in my house. I love the idea. I keep telling you guys, Mike Wang, he watches all my videos. He saw the megaphone and thought that would be a good park rep. <laughs> Let's add that to the game. Okay, this next park rep reward is gonna get you gassed. Because you'll be like, is, is it 2K is doing that of all companies? I know, all right, so let's get into it. So I, I don't want you guys to think that when I'm talking to devs, like it's easy for me to be critical online, but then when I see him in person, I just like coward, and then I never say what's on my mind. No, I was telling him like, listen, the biggest thing people were having a problem with was the microtransactions. And I know it's not a decision that you have to make, but it's a decision as an organization that you guys have to live with. And so we got to talking about microtransactions for a little bit, and then he told me about this rep reward. Now, uh, are, you, are you ready? Okay, okay. <laughs> He called it, I believe, bounce back rep reward. He said once you get to around like 94 or 95 overall, he wasn't sure exactly which one, you get what's called like a bounce back. Not only do you get a million VC, which at first I was like, a whole million? But you get an opportunity to create another player and fast forward that player to a, he said a 90 or a 91 overall. So do you remember the days where like you had to create a new player and then get a new $50 and then grind him over again? Not only does it fast forward the initial grind so you won't have to spend that extra money, 
but on top of that, you get a whole million VC. He also told me that this year, unlike last year, it's a lot easier, not, not that it was a lot easier to grind, but this is how he described it. He said the first week of the game's launch, the tryhards that are going for first rep will likely be able to get to around 92 overall. If you guys remember last year, the after one week, there was a person that reached 90 overall. So he's saying the grind isn't as hard as it was last year. Of course, there's mascots, there's scooters, there's skateboards, and if you paid attention to the trailer, you would know that you could even do tricks and stuff with them. So you might be wondering, Agent, how much does all of this cost? And while we're talking about microtransactions, he's saying like, yo, listen, we tried to make an effort this year to reduce it to, cause we, under, we understand the criticism. And I was like, you do? All right, okay, keep going, Mike, why keep going? And he was like, yeah, so when it comes to things like animations or whether you're buying shoes or whether you're buying facial hair, whatever the thing is, that they didn't, they tried, I don't know how much, cause I couldn't actually see it myself, but they said that they lowered the VC amounts so you weren't spending a ton on things like, if you're trying to get all the animations for your playmaker, you're not breaking the bank. Now I get it, the game is still pay to win at the end of the day, but never in my wildest imagination, without a controversy that exceeded the moon, did I foresee NBA 2K actually taking some steps back. Because do you remember last year when there was that whole controversy and J.R. Smith put out a tweet and they finally did something about it? Nobody put out a tweet about anything. There wasn't any sort of pressure. They just decided like, this can't last forever. Eventually people can get pissed off and it's gonna reach a boiling point and they're gonna cut. So uh, that's good news as well. So you probably caught on by now. I know a few people have talked about it, but the rep is different between each game mode. So if you're a pro-am guy, my career guys aren't gonna be able to grind on their game mode and then show up with a 99 overall on your game mode. So and this also applies to the rec because I know some people are gonna ask, rec? reputation or when you progress on the rec is very separate from when you progress on the park or on the prime or on my career and I like it better that way I don't like that you could just grind my career like you did last year and then you show up as a 99 on all the game modes even though you're a 99 for my career and I get my career was the easiest way to do it so a lot of people did but there were some players like poor boy sin who reached 99 overall exclusively playing on park and I feel like people like him deserve to be What's the word I'm looking for? They deserve their spotlight because that's very challenging to do and takes a whole lot of patience. Mike Wang also mentioned on the note of microtransactions that you're making a lot more VC on events. So like if you uh, play a game of park, you're making more VC than you did previously. So across the board, they wanted to make it more rewarding to actually play the game. And another way they wanted to do that, and you saw a glimpse of it in the trailer, was that spinning wheel. So every day you can spin that wheel and so it gives you some sort of challenge or objective and then if you complete the challenge or objective, you get like a couple thousand VC or something like that. Now you might think, oh that's pretty cool, hold up. Mike Wang said that if you grind and reach that overall, ladies and gentlemen, one of your rep rewards is on that wheel you have an opportunity every time you spin it to win 100,000 VC. So you can just wake up on a regular day, spin the wheel, and because you reach a certain overall, have a chance and potentially win 100,000 VC. See what I'm saying? I feel like not only, and keep in mind, we haven't actually seen any of this, so we only know how much we've been told, but if, if this is true, they've actually, and I know it's still pay to win, but I'll give them credit, for taking some steps back. Let's just put it in perspective. NBA 2K is a game last year that broke all of the selling records of their franchise. They've made more money than ever, not just off game sales, but off microtransactions. And so you're asking the company that just had a career high in revenue and profit to make a decision to scale back on that. Even though we've been criticizing them, it hasn't resulted in any loss of revenue. It's messed up their brand a little bit, but they haven't lost any money because of it. So to go in a boardroom and say, guys, uh, we're gonna need you to reduce that even though we're making a ton of money. It's hard for people that don't understand video games that only ever care about profit. So I told Mike Wang like, people are gonna love that news, man. People will love that news. In the trailer, they also mentioned a game mode called The Crew. And at first I was like, 2K11? Not 2K11, really. Brian Mazik explained this to me, and he also explained it in his article, so I'll leave a link if you wanna dive deep into that. But the basic premise is, I grab me and two other friends, there's three of us. We use our created players, and we go into, uh, you can private matchmake and play against friends and other users online, so I just, you heard me right, ladies and gentlemen, you could private matchmake 3v3 with park sliders, yup, or you can play AI. And so he described in his article and he told me in person that, do you know how they scan our faces into the game? There can be an event where like, you're playing Allen Iverson. 
at the crew. So if you get you and two of your buddies, you can go against Allen Iverson and his squad, or Brandon Roy and his squad, or Chris Smoove and his squad. So from what I understand, you can make a decision to play against users or to play against AI. And I just thought to myself, Oh, that means there's a private park, bro. I wanted it, but I was like, there's no way they're gonna do it. And I know they didn't really do it in the way that I wanted. I was thinking like, give us the whole park to like, so I can invite a hundred friends over and we could just have like a lit time. I'm, I'm using the PC, all right? So if we can not go to sleep while I'm using the PC. <laughs> all right, so do you understand in the vlog I dropped uh, earlier why I was excited? Cause like you, you saw and you even heard in that video, Mike Ryan was saying you saw glimpses of stuff because once you dive into it, you're like, oh my, how could you hear all this and not be excited? I'm still a little bit skeptical. I never want to get carried away when news like this comes out, but it's so hard when we just played 2K18 for a year and you know that game was ass. And then now we're hearing like, not only, oh, let me just move on. Let me, you get, I said this before, let's move on because things do get better. Now, uh, just in terms of the sliders and the gameplay for a little bit, it is hard to shoot. I was missing like, and I was playing with, and I was playing on superstar sliders for most of the day. It is difficult to shoot. You're gonna have to get your jumper on point, ladies and gentlemen. And you know the devs have been talking about a skills gap. Mike Wang talked about it in my last video. Off cam, Scott O'Gallagher was talking about it for a little bit. And apparently it's a point of focus. You will be exposed if you're a bad player this year. If you think like 2K18, you're just gonna be able to green everything because you got kinda close. You're severely mistaken, ladies and gentlemen. And I love it. I And I know Mike Wang was telling me it's very difficult in NBA 2K because the ceiling could be so high or so low. Where do you go to find that balance? But, and I, I, I told him, I'm telling y'all, bro, I don't just talk on videos. I told Mike Wang, I said, Mike Wang, you will receive pressure from the bum ass players. Do not fall for the pressure, Mike Wang. They're gonna tell you that the game is too hard, that the game is broken. They're gonna tell you that, why can't I make a shot? This game is, they will, they will try and pressure you to make the game easy so that noobs like them can feel good. But they're not good. They're trash at the game. Mike Wang, I'm telling you, skills gaps keep people playing games. Because you don't just hop on and get good. You have to get good. And to get good, you have to play the game. I told Mike Wang all of this, bro. I know he watches the videos diligently, so he already heard me say this in a video before. But I had to tell him in person. Uh, so I talked about this in my last video, so I'm just mentioning it again. Interceptions are OD. I honestly feel like they need to be toned down a little bit. Giannis is like Spider-Man, just picking everything off. There's a lot of bump steals, which I think some people I talked to didn't like it at the event, but I was like, I like bump steals. If you're driving into me and running into me, you deserve to turn over the ball. Don't dribble into other people. That's the rule of basketball. The stamina thing was weird for me because all the players I played with didn't have speed boosting ability. A lot of the time I was playing with my Raptors. I heard some people say that all it took was one or two momentum dribbles and their whole stamina was depleted. But for me, I wasn't really having stamina issues, but maybe that's because I'm not always holding the turbo when I dribble, or maybe it's because I'm not a dribble head, I'm not sure. So if you are like a guy who loves to dribble and spam dribbles for the entire clock, one, I hate defending you, all right? So, so maybe stop, all right? <laughs> but two, maybe you should be a little bit worried because if the dribble heads are saying all of it is being depleted after one or two momentum dribbles, then you might be in some trouble. Although it doesn't concern me, I felt like you might want to know some information like that. I asked Mike Wang about the jump shot creator. I asked him when we're gonna get it. Uh, and he said, it's probably around the same spot you got it last year. So I just upgraded all my players to 85 last year. I have to, I'm a YouTuber. And so if you upgrade your players to 85, you're basically gonna be starting with the jump shot creator. Now this is the very interesting part. On the trailer, you guys seen like six or seven different designs on the playground, right? And you might've been wondering, huh, how are they gonna cycle through those? I got the answer for you. And so some of those designs that you saw for the playground in the trailer were just park events. But there was four designs you saw in the trailer that was the day and night cycle of NBA 2K, so let's get into it. So every hour you play NBA 2K in real life is six hours in the virtual world. So in the neighborhood, you playing for an hour equals six hours on NBA 2K. Which means if you play four hours in real life, that means it'll reach a total of 24 hours on NBA 2K. So you can hop on and it'll be night, but after playing for an hour, it'll be a different environment and then a different one after another hour and a different one after another and that doesn't include all the park events where everything just looks different so I was asking Mike Wang at the event I was like yo who is your level design team why do they put gray 
everywhere. Some of the colors need to pop. They need to be vibrant. And he told me it's not called the level design team, it's called the art team. And the art team works on the designs and they heard the criticism we had of NBA 2K18. That we were just looking at the same park all year and because there wasn't any new content, it got dry, it was super great, we know. And so this year, every hour you play, it looks different and that doesn't even include if you hop into house rules or you hop into anti up or whatever the park event of the day is. That, my friends, is really cool. I'm curious how it's gonna work. Like, if I'm in the middle of the game and it reaches the hour, does it just like, <laughs> does it immediately change? Does it fade? I have no clue, but I'm very excited to find out. So on the note of adding new content to the game, I asked Mike Wang, I was like, yo, what happened with 2K18? Why did you guys just drop the game and then never try and support it with any reasonable amount of content? And so Mike Wang was telling me like, yo, this year we're gonna try and put an effort to do that. And I even brought up like, in the past, they added entire new parks to like Rivet City for the My Park Championships. He's like, yeah, this year we're gonna do a better job of that. So the store in day one, as the days go on, they're gonna actively add stuff to the store, et cetera, and I hope that also means they're gonna add different types of game modes. He also told me, and I forgot, so I don't wanna misquote him, something about like spinning a wheel and then whatever it lands on, that's what we're doing. I don't, I don't remember, all right? I, for, I should've remembered, all right? I should've wrote it down, okay? I forgot. So anyway, they, they heard the criticisms of the new content, and I hope they do enough to keep it lit. I don't want them to just add like a shirt to the store every couple weeks and be like, all right, are we done? No, 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 you're not done, all right? We have to add actual content that makes the game fun and brings us back every single day, right? To make us play the game more and more. So we talked about the megaphone earlier, but proximity chat, as explained, is not in the game. I cannot walk up to you anywhere in the playground and talk to you. And I told Mike Wang, like, yo, there's a lot of games doing it successfully. For 2K20, you guys have to. I'm telling you, it would change everything. And so you can now in 2K19 talk to the other team like you could in 17, 16, and 15. I even told Mike Wang when I was at the event that the audio quality in the game is garbage. And he was confused to hear that. I guess he's never heard anybody give him that criticism before, but I was like, you didn't know? Yeah, like if I'm talking with my $200 mic in game, it sounds bad, but when I go to party, it sounds fine. So sometimes I just opt to go to party because I'm recording videos and I don't want the audio to scrape the listener's ears. So maybe they'll do something about that. I have no idea, honestly. They didn't even know that the audio in the game was bad for the game chat. But you can now talk to the other team on top of your team. Honestly, I think it'd be cool to talk to the other team on Prime as well. It'd be cool, just mute them if you don't want it, but it'd be a good feature for those that want to talk smack the way they do on the park. The next thing was shot contests. Now, shot contests look different this year. Now, a lot of people without basketball IQ are gonna be really angry at this, and it's fine. You still have to develop your basketball IQ. Don't worry about it. Just because you're near somebody doesn't mean you contested the shot. This year, you have to contest shots manually, and if you do not put your hand up, don't be surprised it dropped in your face. I remember NBA 2K Dev put out that tweet a few days ago, but I experienced it in game as well. You're gonna have to actively contest shots, ladies and gentlemen. If you're showing up late to contest, don't get angry that it's heavily contested if it already left the player's hands. And two, if you're not putting your own hands up to contest it and you're just running by him, don't, don't think that just because you're in close proximity that it's supposed to be a smothered shot. That being said, contested shots are harder to hit especially on Superstar, shooting is already harder. So when you add contested shots to it, you're basically taking the worst shot you could possibly take in the game. When I was at the event, there was like two or 300 Instagram models and all of them were just taking up space. Like I'm, I'm focused on the bag. I went there to create content, to get some information, to come out with videos because 2K19 is around the corner. Tell me why people in the, in the facility, there was like 500 people there, were more excited about Travis Scott performing than all the news about the 2K, 2K19 playground. Tell me why. I was like, yo, get these guys out of here. There was one girl who spilled her drink on me because she was trying to rush through traffic. And I just, what are y'all doing? Ronnie was the only person communicating with these Instagram models, bro. I didn't see not one YouTuber talking to them. Look, 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 look at this. Somebody come look at this. Look at this. Somebody come and look at this. Every time they tried to talk to me, I swerved. Oh, what do you do? Uh, are you a YouTuber? Okay, what's your YouTube? I'm not interested, all right? Listen, I'm here because I care about 2K. If, listen, if I'm trying to meet Instagram models, there were thousands of clubs in the city. All they were doing was taking up space. Oh my God. Every person, every content creator I talked to about this was like, what were they doing there? Like, like they were just space. They were just taking up more of it in an already hot room without air conditioning. But whatever, that has nothing to do with 2K19. I was just pissed off. All right, buying boost is back. You probably saw it in the trailer. Pay attention next time when you watch trailers, all right? If you look in the corner, there's a little kiosk of an individual where you can buy boost. I'm a little pissed off that made its way back into the game. 
And I'm actually mad I didn't ask Mike Wang about that because I would love to see the thinking behind that. But it's back. I talked to Mike Wang. I said, yo, the dribble heads want a list of speed boosting bills. And Mike Wang was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. He thought about it for a second. He said, if someone's gonna drop it, it's Zach. But he says it's unlikely that Zach is gonna drop that list this year. And I don't know why that was. And I probably should have intrigued. I should have poked around to see why it was. Wait, why can't we see the list this year? So you're just gonna have to guess. Chris Smoove also said in that stream at Ronnie 2 gay in case you forgot, that in, in the version of the game we saw, we couldn't actually see the attributes, right? But in the version of the game that everyone's gonna play, they made an update so that we can see the attributes when we're upgrading our players, so we know, is it a 77 open shot three or a 73? We have to know these details because it makes a very big difference, especially when you're trying to get into tier two or tier three dribbling. There was a screenshot that dropped on Twitter. I actually didn't see this in game. I believe it was Gento who tweeted it out. And uh, basically the VC prices are the exact same. So they did not go up. And this is the first year where I could say 2K. All right. I mean, you still pay to win, but all right, I'm used to it getting worse every year, but this is the first year where it hasn't gotten worse. It's actually gotten better in a lot of circumstances. I like that. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Wang says he loves my channel. All right, he said he's my number one fan. I know some of you guys might think agent, bro, but I don't think he is because I watch all your videos. No, you'd be mistaken, sorry. He not only is he on Notification Squad, but uh, he told me like, sometimes he memorizes every word I make in a video. That's true, that's a true fact, yeah. So uh, there's all these kind of mini games which I think are gonna be pretty irrelevant, but I can't be sure, like dodgeball, etc. Honestly, there was somebody who put out a tweet and I thought it was hilarious. He's like, yo, Agent, they added dodgeball into the game because they're trying to get into the whole battle royale mix. Which, by the way, 2K, if we could add a dodgeball battle royale in a basketball game, that would be hilarious. So if you guys can work on that, I'm sure it can't be that hard to do because from what I understand, dodgeball is like team one and team two right now. But just in case you guys haven't thought about it, Battle Royale places in different parts of the playground and then just have us chucking the ball at people. I'm telling you it's gonna sell. There's all kinds of game modes like slam ball, like you hit a trampoline and go up for a crazy dunk, etc. Listen, all that stuff, and Mike Wang even talked about they like overhauled the trivia so you get like actual meaningful, you, you, get, a, you get a meaningful reward for actually using it. Like, in, 50 VC in 2K18 for answering a question right. I'm not walking into the 2K, the, the store for 50 VC. What am I gonna do at 50 VC? Buy like one 100th of a shoe? So anyway, that's, that's all I heard, ladies and gentlemen, about the NBA 2K19 video game that we're all so excited to play. A lot of this stuff has me incredibly excited. And the funny part is, is I don't even know all of the information. I assume that they want to tell us enough so that we're excited, but they also want to leave stuff in the game so that we have things to get excited about once we actually grind and figure things out. And I like that. Now, don't spoil all the secrets. Enough to get people gas, you know, purchase the product, and then once they get in the product, progression system, if it's better this year, people are gonna play more consistently, and you're, we're hearing lower VC costs. You're telling me, oh, I'm gonna make more players this year. I'm, they've been making an effort to get people to play the game more at the end of the day. And I think one of the biggest barriers they had was microtransactions, things like servers, etc. And it just feels very refreshing to know that they've actually made an effort in areas that I didn't think they would to help improve the game. That on top of the obvious fact that snatchbacks and blowbys aren't nearly as overpowered as they were in previous years. So off rip, that's a huge improvement for me. There's less clipping in the game. Uh, brick wall screens aren't incredibly abusive like in 17. I feel like they fixed a lot of issues. And with any game comes more issues. So I'm, I'm sure some glitch is gonna come out. I reminded Mike Wang, I said, please do not let an animation glitch come out. It will ruin the entire meta of the game. And he said that, yo, they're on that because it happened the last two or three years and people have found new and new ways to do the animation glitch. It will ruin the game. Please do not let it happen. And so uh, I hope they stick to their guns. I hope they keep the skills gap. Bro, they're talking what I wanna hear right now. And I kinda just wanna fast forward the next week so the game launches. But anyway, the prelude drops in four hours and I have to prepare. So if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like. If you guys are new to the channel and you wanna watch more 2K content, I'm, that's all I'm doing. I'm not leaving my house for the next three months. Subscribe to the channel. Watch one of these two videos if you haven't watched them already. And I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.